how to build wealth from scratch. Let's talk about that. We have a couple points that are critical. So we're talking about your wealth mindset. And part of the mindset is also part of the entrepreneurial mindset. I'm really bringing that in because so many of you, you want to create wealth and you're in a little tiny W-2 job and you work for somebody else getting them rich and you haven't really decided your plan. So first you have to change all that. The next thing we got to talk about is the effective investing strategies and corporate structure that is necessary for the foundation of building wealth, or you might as well just give it all the IRS. And then last is how do you use debt? When you understand good debt and arbitrage debt, the difference between building wealth from scratch and building it in three years versus five years versus 10 years, it's huge, right? So good debt is an amplifier. At the biggest level, it amplifies your wealth and your ability to have other choices. So get a pen and paper, this is a big one. Now, to start off, those of you who have my journal, if you haven't, get one in the description because you got to have a place to take notes and have it congruent. You don't want to have just it on little pieces of paper and little stickies all over. You want to start building this as a plan. Now, there's nothing more important, in my opinion. Building generation wealth is a huge part of what we do. And a lot of you think, well, you know, making more money, making more money. Yes, making more money is part of it. But the wealth building, the generational part that passes is your keep money. How do you corporately structure and get a trust? And how do you invest? Because when you pass, the how you made money is going to probably go away unless you own the family business. How you kept it and how you invested it then moves on to the kids, which is where the legacy and the lineage needs to be. So it's a huge different mindset where a lot of you just think, I got to make money, make money, make money. And all that's, that's how you live your life. Your head's down, making money. And you wonder why you're not wealthy because all you're doing is making, paying tax, spending, make, pay tax, spend. Great plan. You're not going to get anywhere. So you got to stop and reset. A wealth mindset is really understanding you have to make it, keep it, invest it, and use a team. So seeing this when I was working with the Rich Dad Poor Dad group, I saw very clearly without the team, this doesn't work because somebody's got to do your taxes. It's not you. This is a highly specialized tax strategist, not even just a basic CPA, highly qualified tax strategist. They study tax. It takes a lot of corporate structure. It takes a trust uh, team. It takes an IRA specialist. It takes a funding specialist. It takes credit specialists. I have 28 experts around us. That's how it takes to build wealth from scratch. Now, I built my wealth from scratch, but I did a really bumpy journey because I like a lot of you. I spent a lot of money early in my career on some tuition with Bob Proctor mostly because I thought it was all about mindset. Well, then there becomes this amazing action and knowledge. You have to know money. Well, who else teaches it? No one. So I need you here. I need you here. Subscribe to my channel five days a week. Consume this content on how to build wealth. So building wealth in the early, like early parts of your stages of doing it. I don't care how old you are. So get rid of age. I mean, I've got teenage millionaires to people that are, they finally became a millionaire in their eighties, but how you build it, you've got to amplify your income. So if you have a big job, that's great, but you have to have that extra hustle. Not side hustle. The difference between a side hustle and a hustle, in my opinion, is under six figures and over six figures. It takes the same activity. You still have to market. You still have to sell. You still have to understand cash flow. So why build for something less than six figures when you just build the same thing, just amplify it a little more? So yes, you have to make money. I want you to have an entrepreneurial venture. I want you to have something that you actually want to do. Like I will be coaching and teaching and answering phone calls and questions probably till the day I die. So other things about just having that mindset in the speed of which you want to do it. Like when I wrote The Millionaire Maker, I said it's a three to five year plan. But some of you, you're going to take the 10 year plan. Some of you want to do it. Fastest one I've seen is 142 days because they got a plan. They got clear where they wanted to go. They got clear what industry they wanted to be a millionaire in and they stayed focused. And they did everything I said by hiring the team, getting the corporate structure, getting the trust, really reducing their taxes, which gave them more money to put back into their plan. So follow trends, be on channels, especially mine, but be on other people that are in this space. Be, and then yourself. Like when I say read my books, I'm talking about read all six. I have six best-selling books. I have a business plan. Do a business plan for your business. Do a wealth plan for you and your wealth and your family. Like dig deep in, not just cursory over the top. I say I always say the wealthy people play on the playing field, not sitting in the bleachers. See, and a lot of you, you love sitting in the bleachers your whole life because God forbid you actually have to go to work. And I'm going to not lie to you like a lot of other people say, oh, it's just easy. Money comes, you know. I do say money comes easily and frequently, but it didn't in the beginning. But I hired a lot of men 
mentors and I hired a lot of really smart guides that put me on a path and I was a millionaire. Once I got committed, I was a millionaire six months. So I know it works. I did it to myself and I've done it over and over and over to tens of thousands of people. So that wealth mindset and that entrepreneurial energy has got to come to you. And uh, our gap analysis, which is in the book, uh, so in third chapter, do a gap. What, where are you? What do you want? And we will help you build your plan. We'll help you get the right guidance. We'll help you give your team. When you join, sign into our community, you have access to my entire team that helped build me and build all these other millionaires. So you can be one at any point from scratch, five years, 10 years, up to you. Now, the next part is investing strategies and corporate structure. Here's the easiest way I teach it. Companies make money. In America, they're called C-Corps, LLCs, limited partnerships, or S corps. Companies make money, individuals get taxed, right? Kiyosaki said it very clear. There's a whole graphic in the Rich Dad Poor Dad book. There's two tax structures, right? Where you make money in your company, activate 81,000 pages of tax code, then pay tax late, right? You pay after, right? So you make, spend, then pay tax. Or you can be just you, an employee. You make money, you get taxed to pieces. Then you get to spend what's left. So it's up to you. Where do you want to spend? Do you want to spend as deductions? Do you want to spend is just because you're spending? So that's a fairly easy decision. To me, that's the logic. That's, of course, I'm living corporate life. I've been living corporate life since my late teens, early 20s. And I've just refined it and refined it and refined it. And when I became a single mom and was putting my kids through college, corporations could have a 100% education reimbursement plan. I mean, I've been telling you there are so many strategies to make this faster and more efficient and safer, really, when you become the entrepreneur, you make the money. But the investing strategies are critical, and I'm seeing this more and more and more with high net worth people because they're so busy being busy in their business, they forget to invest in other assets. So they just throw all their money in the stock market. Well, the problem with that is because you're making a lot of money, the last thing you need is more capital gains money. That's what the stock market's going to do. So real estate, gas and oil, mineral rights, water rights, aviation, there's a whole whole list of depreciating assets. I mean, cattle, equipment, there's so many things you could do. Horses. I mean, I got people who actually, you know, do tons of horse racing. Anyway, there's lots and lots of ways, but the investing strategy is a huge piece of the, not only the maintenance of your wealth, but then the amplification of it. If you want to do it in like three to five years, you've got to do some better investing strategies and you have to do the corporate structure. So before I tell you like the real juice, which is like good debt, some of you say, oh my gosh, she's going to talk about debt. I'm so scared. Some of you freak out when you're in debt, 20, 30, 40 grand. I'm talking hundreds of thousands, if not millions in debt. Are you willing to go there with really, really high strategy, great mentoring around you and learn to do it? Because this is a very different game. If you get emotional about this on the debt side, the game's over. So before I continue, subscribe to this channel. Be here five days a week. I need you here, your whole family here. It's a family-friendly channel. Anyone five years old and up should and can be here. So I look forward to having you. And again, grab that journal that we talked about. Also in the description, I just have a ton of gifts. So just go through the description, grab my millionaire intensive tickets. I have lots of different uh, free gifts for you, some softwares that we use for investing strategies, which is a, it's called iFlip. Grab that, it's a free uh, app I'm giving you. A lot of ways to do this, but debt, is a very different conversation because you've been taught your whole life that debt's bad. Debt is great if it's good debt and you can arbitrage good debt. So good debt is money. So first of all, debt is the cost of money. So it's gonna cost you 0%, 1%, 2%, anything under five is good debt. Leverage against good assets. So why pay that off? I just talked to a client this morning and he said, yeah, I'm going to buy this house. I'm going to build this place and I'm going to pay it off as fast as I can. I said, no, you're going to pay it off in 30 years and maybe even refi for another 10 years because why would you pay off sub five money when you can invest for 15, 20%? You say, well, where do you find those investments? Well, not necessarily in the stock market with somebody else is in charge of it that doesn't even know what they're doing. It takes less time to advise you in a traditional financial firm to tell you what to do with your money, like a financial planner than it does to cut hair. Sorry, you have somebody going to school longer to cut your hair than the people you just flip your money over to and say, oh, I call it park and pray. I'm going to park my money with you. God knows if they have a reputation or, or not, or they don't actually know what they're doing. And if you're a millionaire, why would you give somebody that's not a millionaire your money? That's an insane conversation to me. Good debt is money that's arbitraged. So for example, if you can get 0% money, which we have over 500 financial institutes. So if you have good credit and then you have some corporate credit, 
you can actually get 0%. So there's nothing better than that because it's free. So I have real estate flippers who will go get $100,000, $150,000. They'll buy a property. They might use some traditional financing to get that done, but they'll use this 0% money to do all the rehab. So there's no hard money costs. There's no construction costs. They rehab, they refi or sell it out to a retail buyer and then pay off all of it. So it stays at 0%. And then they go again and they go again. I also have people who buy, I have a lot of chiropractors, naturopaths, doctors who do a lot of supplements. So supplements cost money. So instead of financing them from your cash, put them on 0%. I mean, if you're going to buy $100,000 worth of inventory, if you're going to buy $100,000 worth of books, if you're going to buy hundred whatever, put it at 0%, pay it off in 21 months while you're keeping your money to make money. So my best arbitrage debt clients, I mean, some of them are in debt to a million, $2 million. Arbitrage, right? That's like free, almost two, 3% money. And they're making 12, 15s and 20%. So they're making the spread and that's basically printing money. Think about it. If you were $100,000 in debt, but it cost you nothing to be in debt, 0% financing. And you could find a way to invest for 12%, 15%. You're making 12,000. You're printing 15,000 in interest. That's just money. That's the cost of that money. That's what you're getting for it. So that's free last I checked. So the faster you want to do it, you're going to include good debt in your formula. If you don't know what we're talking about, please call our office, have a set strategy session, talk to our team. You can always go to Ask Laurel, A-S-K-L-O-R-A-L, ask a question, make a request. We're there every day answering your questions. And we are right here for you. When you decide to raise your hand and say, I am done doing it my way, I'm going to do it your way. Talk to you tomorrow.